going to start a lecture. Okay. So system of progs, we, we started discussing and uh, probably we have discussed the digest of system of frog. And this was the last topic, last slide which we have discussed. Now the next system we are going to discuss is the respiratory system of frog, okay? Now, first of all, what is respiration? Respiration and breathing are two different processes. You have studied in class eight as well. Respiration is basically the oxidation of food to release energy. It means that when in food oxygen is utilized and uh, as a help uh, of utilizing oxygen, uh, energy is released, that process is known as respiration. And breathing is basically the exchange of gases. Here, what we mean by the respiration is that we are going to discuss the gaseous exchange in frog. That how oxygen is taken in, how carbon dioxide is moved out. That's what we have to discuss, okay? So let's start with the respiration. Okay, the process in which food is oxidized to release energy is called respiration. And uh, breathing is basically, breathing is a process in which carbon dioxide gas is produced and oxygen gas is in tech, uh, taken in, okay? So carbon dioxide water vapors are produced as a waste product during uh, respiration. And oxygen is being utilized as a raw material along with the food. So the types of uh, respiration in frog, there are three different types of respiration in frog. So it means that frog respire by different means. They have different moods of respiration. Let's discuss the different moods of respiration in frog. The first one is known as buccal respiration, okay? What is buccal respiration? Buccal respiration means the type of respiration that take place through buccal cavity. It means through mouth, okay? Second is cutaneous respiration. It is the type of respiration that takes place through the skin. Cutaneous means skin. So from the layer of the skin, the process of respiration that takes place is known as cutaneous respiration. The third one is pulmonary respiration. It means that the type of respiration in which lungs are involved, in which uh, it normally uh, nostrils and lungs are involved, so the oxygen is taken into the lungs and carbon dioxide is moved out of the lungs. That is the, uh, you can say, pulmonary respiration. So the first one is buccal respiration, okay? Buccal respiration is the exchange of gases takes place to the inner lining of the buccal cavity. Buccal cavity means mouth, okay? So regarding the inner lining of the mouth has a lot of capillaries in it. When oxygen is taken in, that oxygen is absorbed to the capillaries and it goes to the cell. So buccal respiration is uh, the process of respiration that takes place through buccal cavity. Second is cutaneous respiration. So as I discussed earlier with you, that the exchange of gases that takes place through the skin of the frog. Normally, when the frog is in hibernation, hibernation is the winter sleep, or when the frog is swimming in the water, so at that time, they are going to slimy and moist, and they have a lot of capillaries in them, which is rich in blood capillaries. So the oxygen amount is trapped into the blood capillaries by the skin, and the cutaneous respiration takes place. The third one, that is the buccal, the pulmonary respiration. It is the most important respiration process. The majority of respiration takes place through the lungs of the frog. So basically the respiration that takes place through the lungs is called pulmonary respiration. The term pulmonary stands for um, lungs, okay? Wherever you see the, the term pulmonary, it will mean lungs. Wherever you see the term cutaneous, it means skin. Wherever you see the term buccal, it means mouth. So these are the three types of respiration that one. And then if you have any question, you can ask me the question. This is basically the respiratory system of a frog. This is the uh, larynx, okay? The vice box, this is the trachea, the windpipe. These are the branches of the trachea that is known as the bronchus, right bronchus and left bronchus. And this is right lung and left lung. Inside the lung, we have bronchioles and then we are having alveoli. So that you have studied in animal, basically the respiratory system, 
and frogs. So there are three types of respiration in frog. Again, buccal respiration, cutaneous respiration, pulmonary respiration. Respiration through the lining of the mouth is called buccal respiration. Respiration through the moist skin is known as cutaneous respiration. Respiration through the lungs is known as pulmonary respiration. I hope you understand it. If there is any, any question regarding this topic, uh, you can ask the question. Yes. Any question from anyone? Response quickly, kindly respond quickly. It's clear to all of you. Okay, so uh, it's very uh, easy topic. Nothing is much uh, different, uh, difficult in this one. So it's very easy to understand. Okay, let's move to the next topic. Then let's move to the next topic now. The next system of the uh, frog. And this was the pulmonary respiratory system. Let's move. This is also the respiratory system of lungs. This is the internal structure. You can see here the internal structure. So inside the lungs, when it goes, it, it becomes the um, blood capillary. That becomes the uh, alveoli. It becomes the air sac. That is known as the. Uh, you can say what that is. That is known as the uh, bronchioles. So that is inside the inside the lungs, which is present. Outside the lung, you have seen this is also the lung. That is also the lung. The same. Sir, thing. what is glottis? Glottis is basically a spot that is present in the trachea. Okay. Normally, uh, the part that is that is known as the larynx. The, along with the larynx, there is the glottis present. So as I told you people in the digestive system, so there is a flip present. Okay. So when you uh, take food, that glottis is basically closed to the. This is basically a plif, so it closes the respiratory system so that the food does not go into the respiratory system. When you inhale the air, then the glottis is open and the air can easily move into the glottis and into the trachea. So glottis is basically present in the pharynx region of the buccal cavity and it is a kind of organ that is a kind of, uh, you can say, lid. Okay, a lid, a ductan type. So it opens up at a time when you are respiring. And when you are eating food, it closes. So the food sir, particle does not go into the lungs. Sir, but when we are eating, we do need oxygen, obviously. So how you does need oxygen, work? but you need oxygen, but you need oxygen later on. And we are not discussing you, we are discussing frog. Okay? We are not discussing human beings who are here. So do not compare frog with human being. There are totally different things. Okay, and we discussed in the frog that the respiration does not only take place through the lungs. The respiration also takes place through the skin. It also takes place through the buccal cavity. And it also takes place through the lungs. So there are three three different kinds of respiration in frog. We are discussing here frog, not human beings. Okay? So don't, don't be confused between human beings and frog. Is it clear? Okay, yes, let's move. Sir. Okay, let's move then. The next system that is a circulatory system again one of the most important system and uh, the circulatory system is basically uh, very much important because it has veins it has arteries it has capillaries it has heart so it is very much important let's discuss the circulatory system in frog now so first of all parts of circulatory system in frog the first one the major part is the heart then arteries then veins and then capillaries okay these are the four parts present in the circulatory system of frog, or you can say in the human beings as well. So four parts, heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Now we are going to discuss all these parts in detail, that what these parts look like, what they perform function, whatever the function of these parts is, let's discuss them one by one. First of all, heart. What is heart? Heart is a muscular pumping organ which is enclosed in a membrane called pericardium. See, heart is muscular, made up of muscles known as cardiac muscles. Second, it's a pumping organ. Come anytime it's, it's doing what? It's pumping the blood. Okay. Third, it is enclosed outside, it is enclosed in a membrane. That membrane is known as pericardium. 
if you have seen uh, an animal right in the Eid al Adha, uh, you, you must have seen the slaughtered animals and you must have seen the heart of them. So the heart of them externally is enclosed in a transparent membrane. That transparent membrane is known as pericardium. Inside that transparent membrane, they have a lot of muscles present in them without any bone. There is no bone in the heart. All of the muscles are present and they are very strong muscles known as cardiac muscles. And what does the muscle do? It contracts and relax, contracts and relax, doing the movement of the organ. So basically the heart is doing what? The heart is completely it is pumping the blood out of the out to the body and then it's receiving the blood back. So when it is, it is compressed, the blood is pumped out. When it's open, the blood comes back to the heart. Okay, so heart is a muscular pumping organ. It's called pulsatile organ. Bhi kehte hai. Pulsatile means pulse create karna wala. Okay, the one who create pulse. The pulse create karta hai. So a muscular pulsatile organ, a muscular pumping organ, which is enclosed in a membrane. And that membrane is known as pericardium. Okay, what is the shape of the heart? Structure of the heart. Let's discuss some of the structure of the heart. Um, frog heart is basically three... Uh, true chambers, okay, and two accessory chambers present in them. So, in total, normally, with what you can say, in totally, they have five chambers. But when we talk about true chambers, the two chambers are three. So, when you are asked an exam, if you, somebody asks you an exam, that how many cham how many chambers of the heart of frog are there? So, you are going to answer three chambers. Okay, there are three chambers. Two upper chamber, one lower from the human heart. The human heart has four chambers. Okay, the human heart has four chambers, but the frog heart has three chambers: the two upper chambers and one lower chamber. Okay, the other two chambers are the accessory chambers. Accessory chambers ko hum false chambers bhi kehte hai. On other hand, isko hum zayed chamber kehte hai. So, ye organs ko connect karte hai, but they are not the true chambers. So, true chambers nahi hote. Let's move to the next. Now, the right auricle, the left auricle, and the ventricle are the true chambers. Okay, these are the three true chambers. The upper part, the other upper Latin part of the heart has two chambers. One is the right auricle, second is the left auricle. Okay, the lower chamber, the conical shaped chamber, is a single chamber. That chamber is known as ventricle. So, there are three true chambers in the frog hearts. Two auricles, right and left side auricles, because the auricle receives and uh, uh, basically what it do, it receives oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So because of that, because of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, they have separate chambers in them. In the right chamber, uh, deoxygenated blood comes. In the left chamber, oxygenated blood comes. So left chamber. And the right chamber are the auricles, and the ventricle is also a single chamber from where the blood is basically distributed to different parts of the body. So that they, they, they three are the they, these three are the true chambers. The other two, that is sinus venosus and truncus arteriosus, are the accessory chambers. They are also known as the false chambers. Okay, so totally. And total, along with the accessory chamber, frog has five chamber. But when we talk about the two chambers of the heart, there are three chambers present in the heart that are the left auricle, the right auricle, and the ventricle. The sinus venosus and the truncus arteriosus are the accessory chambers that are present in the heart. And what is the function of sinus venosus and truncus arteriosus? The sinus venosus is going to form venous system. We will study about veins. So the venous system is formed from sinus venosus and the truncus arteriosus is going to form arterial system. So we'll study about the arteries as well. There is another system known as the arterial system. The arterial system is being comprised of truncus arteriosus and the venous system is comprised of sinus venosus. So let's, let's see what is the further uh, function of the heart. What is the right auricle then? Right auricle is basically a thin walled chamber. It means that there are less muscles in it. Okay, the number of muscle, the amount of muscle present in the right, in the right chamber is basically thin wall. It's thin, okay? So muscles come out of the It receives deoxygenated blood from sinus venosus, from the venous system. Okay, what is the function of the vein? The vein is returning the blood back to the heart. So the blood that is coming back to the heart from the different parts of the body, Basic except lungs, that blood is basically deoxygenated. So that deoxygenated blood is received by the right side of the heart, that is the right auricle. And from the sinus venosus, it is received. 
And the second chamber is the left auricular. It's also a thin walled chamber because uh, uh, there is also a number of muscles. The amount of muscle is less, and it receives oxygenated blood from lungs. Okay, it receives oxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood. In the right side of the heart, we have deoxygenated blood. Is that clear? Then we are having ventricle. So ventricle, the thick wall chamber, a lot of muscle present in ventricle. Okay, and what it do? It receives deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood right away from the auricles, from the right auricle and from the left auricle. It so the oxygenated blood from the left side and the deoxygenated blood from the right side is being received by the ventricle. And then after the ventricle, that blood is transferred to the trunk artery versus so the trunk artery versus. Basically, the sinus venous is present on the dorsal side, on the back side, okay? And it forms, uh, you can say, a union of vein is basically, there are lots of vein which is, which is forming the sinus venosis, okay? And then we are having the trunk of salt so as we, we know that the sinus venosis is composed of veins, veins normally, a lot of the veins receive deoxygenated blood, except one vein, that is the pulmonary vein. But remaining all the veins receive deoxygenated blood, so the deoxygenated blood is being carried to the Sinus venosa. The trunk of salt is doing one. It's a thick walled um, chamber arising from the ventricle and it is formed from the union of the arteries. And what is the function of the artery? The, ar the arteries are going to carry the blood away from the heart. So the blood, the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood is received from the ventricle and it is being carried away to the different parts of the body. Okay, by truncus arteriosus. So truncus arteriosus receives the blood from the ventricle and it transfers the blood to the different regions of the body wherever that blood is required. The oxygenated blood will move to the all parts of the body and the deoxygenated blood will move to the lungs. Why the deoxygenated blood go to the lungs? It goes to the lung for, for purification. So the oxygen can come into the blood and the carbon dioxide should move out of the blood. So that blood reaches directly to the, it reaches directly to the uh, heart and then, then there is a, a sinus venosis. So whenever the deoxygenated blood is present, the deoxygenated blood is received from the different regions of the body towards the sinus venosis through the veins. So the veins collect that blood and bring back to the sinus venosis. Okay, let's see the diagram and then we'll move to the question answers. This is the dorsal view. This one is the dorsal view of the heart. Okay, and this is the ventral view, the front view of the heart. So in the front view of the heart is like this, in the dorsal side the heart is like this, okay? You can see, we'll, we'll discuss now, uh, in the next topic we'll discuss arteries and veins, so you will understand that what basically the arteries are doing and what different kind of arteries are present in the heart. So the heart has, now, right now you have to understand two things. One, uh, about the chambers, this is the right, uh, the left article, this is the right article. Article has two chambers, okay? Article has two chambers, but ventricle has one chamber. This is the ventricle, it is a single chamber. Now, what is, where is sinus venosus and trunca arteriosus? This one, this one is sinus venosus. This is sinus venosus. And this one, this one is trunca arteriosus. So from here, at the back side, you'll see the trunca arteriosus is present over here. And here on the front side, you'll see the trunca arteriosus is present over here. This is trunca arteriosus, and this one is sinus venosus. So from the sinus venosus, different kinds of veins are coming. Different veins are coming, different veins are coming, and it's joining over here. And to the uh, trunca arteriosa, different kind of arteries are coming. They are the arteries which are coming to the sinus venous uh, trunca arteriosa and joining it. So this is all about the heart, the structure of the heart of frog. Now uh, you must have some question regarding this, and whatever the question you have, you can ask it uh, one by one right now, so that I can answer your questions. Whatever the question you have regarding the heart frog, heart of frog. Yes. Now what are the questions regarding the heart of frog? Uh, one by one, you can ask your questions. Yes. Any other question? Now ask the question quickly. I think the whole class is sleeping. Zoha sinus venosus is basically a necessary chamber of the heart and it is basically made from the collection of veins. 
So different veins collect and it forms sinus venosus. It receives deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body. No more question? Okay. Okay, then move to the next topic. Now, next topic is arterial system. Very much important topic this is arterial system of frog. It means that we are going to discuss the arteries of the frog, especially the main arteries of the frog. And the question can be asked in exam as well. Okay, this question is asked. Either the exam is asked, you can write down the different arteries and different part and name different arteries of the frog, or define the different arteries of the frog. Yeah, explain arterial system. So this is the question that can be asked from you. What are arteries? Arteries are blood vessels which carry blood away from the heart to different parts of the body. Okay, arteries are blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart to the different parts of the body. Okay, now what is the arterial system? Components of arterial system. Arterial system has uh, three kinds of arteries present. In it. There are three sets of arteries. Number one is palmocutaneous arteries. Palmocutaneous arteries are the arteries which supply deoxidated blood from heart to the lungs and skin. And why is this blood supplied to the lungs and skin? It is supplied to the lungs and skin to make it oxygenated. To take out carbon dioxide out of this blood and make this blood oxygenated, the arteries, especially the palmocutaneous artery, is doing what? It is carrying this blood right from the heart to the skin and the lungs. And we know in the skin and the lungs what will happen. In the skin and the lungs, respiration will take place, oxygen will diffuse and carbon dioxide will move out. So in this regard, in this way, basically what will happen? The blood will become purified. Okay? So palmocutaneous artery. Second artery, the second set of arteries is carotid arteries. Carotid arteries are the set of arteries that supply oxygenated blood from the truncus arteriosus to the various part of the head. Means to the upper part of the body, right? The eyes, the hair, face, the ears, the nose, the brain. Remember, there is only one artery that carry deoxygenated blood, that is palmocutaneous artery. Otherwise, remaining all arteries will carry oxygenated blood. So, um, palmocutaneous artery will carry oxygenated, deoxygenated blood and carotid artery will carry oxygenated blood to the head region of the body. The third artery is known as systemic artery. Now, systemic arteries again supply oxygenated blood to all parts of the body except head and lungs except head and lungs because to the lungs palmocutaneous artery is carrying the, the blood and to the head carotid artery is carrying the blood we are remaining all parts of the body the remaining all parts of the body the blood is carried by the means of systemic arteries this is also known as systemic arches okay also known as carotid arches also known as palmocutaneous arches the arteries are also known as arches. So arteries are basically the blood vessels carry the blood away from the heart to the different parts of the body. And there are three types of arterial systems present in the body. There are three kinds of arteries present in the body. Palmocutaneous arteries carry the blood, especially deoxygenated blood to the, from the heart to lungs and uh, skin. Carotid artery carry oxygenated blood from truncus arteriosus to sinus venosus. Um, and other various parts of the head okay and then we are having systemic arteries so they carry the blood especially oxygenated blood uh, to all parts of the body except head and lungs so let's see the diagram and then we'll move to this is the diagram of the arterial system this diagram is one of the most important diagram for the five marks question this diagram will be asked from you people to draw the arterial system for five marks okay there are lots of arteries shown but in your book, there is very less arteries which are shown. Just concentrate on those arteries which are shown in your book. That is enough for you. This is the whole arterial system. The diagram needs a lot of practice. This is a, which one of the most difficult diagrams uh, to make it perfect, to make it ex executed perfect. And uh, 
to label it quite good. So it is for five marks and you are supposed to make this diagram in a way that it should be presented very, very good. Okay. Now, if you have any question regarding the arterial system, so you can put your question forward so that I can answer your questions. Rubab Siddiqui, why your screen is not presenting? All of you do not have the screen presented to you people. No, sir, it's presenting. It is presenting. But Rubab, I think your problem is there. That's your own problem, your system problem, I think. You should rejoin the class. Sir, I have a new update in the classroom. I have a new update in the classroom. किसने अपडेट किया है आप लोगों को बताया नहीं था किसने के स्टूडेंट्स आप लोगों को इतनी क्लियरली सबने बताया होगा कि भाई स्क्रीन्स को अपडेट नहीं करना अपने सिस्टम्स को अपडेट नहीं करना अदरवाइज आपको फिर प्रॉब्लम होगी इट्स नॉट कंपैटिबल देन आपको पुराने सिस्टम पे चलना था ऑटो अपडेट बंद करके रखो ना अपने सिस्टम्स के ऊपर किसको समझ नहीं आ रहा कौन बोल रहा है मुझे समझ नहीं आ रहा रुबाब रुबाब अब मैं क्या कर सकता हूँ आपके साथ आपको समझ नहीं आ रहा तो जी आप पहले सवाल कर ले जल्दी जल्दी शबश रुबाब इफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम यू कैन अब नाउ नाउ व्हाट कैन आई डू आई Okay, ask me the question. Ayman, systemic arteries, head and lungs to systemic arteries, head and lungs to oxygen supply. Why do you not get oxygen? Oh, boy. One artery is cassette. Every place will supply blood to the supply. To the head region, carotid artery is supplying. To the lungs, palmocutaneous artery is supplying. So, uh, systemic artery is not supplying, definitely. I don't know if you can ask me that question. If you can ask me that question. Another question? Now ask a tree. नहीं सर सही है। एमन, I was telling that to the head region, carotid artery is supplying the blood. To the lungs, palmocutaneous artery is supplying the blood. So that's why systemic arteries are not supplying blood over there, because systemic artery is not present in those regions. Any other question? Ask the question, Rubab. Calm down a little bit. It will um, work, inshallah. Anyone else is having any question? Palmocutaneous artery is not known as pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery means that the artery that supply blood only to the lungs. Cutaneous is the, the artery that supply blood to the skin. Palmocutaneous means supplying blood to the skin and lung both. Any other question? Palmocutaneous is combination, na? It's combination of pulmonary and cutaneous. So you can't tell them pulmonary artery. It's not pulmonary artery. It's the combination of two, pulmonary and cutaneous. Both of them, both of them carry deoxygenated blood. Okay. 
Yes, they both carry deoxygenated blood. But sir, you said that only pulmonary arteries carry deoxygenated blood. But a pulmocutaneous artery, pulmocutaneous, cutaneous is basically an artery that supplies blood to the skin region, okay? So now, the, now, basically to the skin region, in the skin region there is a respiratory system taking place. Oxygen is taken in, okay? Majority of this work is done by, by lungs because the amount of oxygen taken into the lung is much more than the amount that is taken into the skin. But sometimes, definitely when the frog is in the water, and it's in hibernation, at that time, their lungs is not going to work. Their skin is going to work. So at that time, the pulmonary uh, artery is not going to work for them. At that time, the cutaneous artery will work for them. At a time when they are at land and they are in the place where oxygen is present and they can take in oxygen through their lungs, then the pulmonary artery will work for them. G S A E O T I because when you see when the blood reaches the, oxy, the the lungs or the skin what happens to the blood the blood reaches the blood capillaries inside the lung there is oxygen present that oxygen diffuses into the blood and the carbon dioxide is diffused out of the blood so you imagine while you respire while you are respiring what are you doing you are taking in oxygen what are you bringing out you are bringing out carbon dioxide from where does that carbon dioxide comes that carbon dioxide comes from the food that comes from the blood you are having in your lungs. So the lungs, the blood is coming to the lungs. Carbon dioxide is moving out of that blood. Oxygen is going into that blood. And that blood is then again supplied back to the heart. And it's circulating. Complete circulation is on. Clear? Human also have cutaneous arteries, human also have pulmonary arteries. But our system is much, much complicated than the frog. So our pulmonary artery and cutaneous artery are separate. Okay. Let's move to the next topic now. Rubab, you should wait. Uh, I'll check that after the class that what is the problem with your screen. Uh, we'll see that, inshallah, it will work, okay? Okay, let's move now. So this one was uh, arterial system. Now the next system we are having is the venous system. Let's discuss the venous system of frog, the system that is comprised of veins. So first of all, what are veins? Veins are the blood vessels that bring blood back to the heart from the different parts of the body. Now the circulatory system has two main important things, veins and arteries. The arteries are supplying the blood from the heart to the different regions of the body. And the veins is collecting that blood from the different regions of the body and it is bringing it back to the heart. So that it is again supplied to the different regions of the body. So let's discuss the venous system, the components of the venous system. Venous system has pulmonary venous system, sinus venous system, and portal venous system. There are three types of venous system. Pulmonary venous system, sinus venous system, and portal venous system. Let's discuss them. First of all, we are having pulmonary venous system. So pulmonary venous system is basically the setup vein that bring the oxygenated blood from lungs to the left auricle of the heart. So the system that bring the blood back from the heart, oh sorry, back from the lungs to the heart. Now to the lungs, basically deoxygenated blood was gone. And then from the, from the, heart, from the lungs back to the heart, oxygenated blood will come. So the pulmonary venous system is the set of veins that bring oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left auricle of the heart. Okay. Sinus venous system is again a complicated system. It has two set of veins. One is known as precaval vein. Okay. What is the precaval vein? Precaval vein is a set of veins that collect deoxygenated blood from the head regions and the forelimbs. Okay, and it brings it back to the right article. Now, what happens basically? Pre mean first, cable mean cavity. Okay, now this is the abdominal cavity. Before the abdominal cavity is pre cavity region. 
after the abdominal cavity is post caval region so the pre caval region is doing what it is the set up the pre caval veins is the set up veins that collect deoxygenated blood from the head region okay and from the four limbs and it brings us back to the right auricle of the heart because in the right auricle we are having deoxygenated blood and the left auricle we are having oxygenated blood then we are having post caval veins so it is the set up vein that collect deoxygenated blood from the lower parts of the body not from the head region from the head region pre caval veins is going to collect post caval yani cavity ke niche wala hissa it's going to collect deoxygenated blood from the lower parts of the body and bring it back to the right auricle of the heart so the 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 pre caval and the post caval is doing what it is bringing the blood back to the right auricle of the heart from here the blood will go to the ventricle from the ventricle the blood will go to the lungs and the lungs again will become oxygenated and then it will be distributed among the different regions of the body now let's move towards the portal venous system portal system is basically the system of veins that collect blood from one organ and drains it into another organ but not opens directly to the heart aur yahan par dekho cheez kya hai what does it say is a system of veins collect blood from one organ let's suppose an organ uh, we are having let's suppose digestive system in a digestive system the blood is collected and that blood is then brought to the liver so from the digestive system the blood is collected brought to the liver but not directly to the heart so when the blood is collected from one region and is being drained to the other region but it is not directly supplied to the heart that system is known as portal system or portal veins okay portal veins or portal system of the veins that collect blood from one organ of the body discharge it into another organ of the body but does not carry it directly to the heart it goes to the heart ultimately but indirectly goes to the heart it's not going directly to the heart so that is the portal system there are two sets of portal system one is known as hepatic portal system hepatic kehte hain liver ko hepatic hepatitis suna hoga aap logon ne hepatitis is the inflammation of liver liver ke inflammation ke jigar ke inflammation ko hepatitis kehte hain so hepatic means liver hepatic portal system is related to liver the set up veins draining their blood into liver and set up draining directly into the heart and from where it is collecting the blood it is collecting the blood from the abdominal region collecting the blood from the digestive system it include hepatic and abdominal portal veins okay the second we are having is renal renal means kidney wherever you see the term renal it means kidney wherever you see the term hepatic it means liver keep it in mind i am not going to tell you these things time and again hepatic mean liver renal mean uh, uh, renal means kidney so the set up when draining their blood into kidney okay rather than directly taking into the heart so that set up veins that drain their blood to the kidney are known as renal portal system or renal portal veins that do not carry the blood directly to the heart the blood goes to the heart but indirectly okay this is basically the venous system uh, of the frog so the frog venous system is like this it is receiving the blood from different region the pre caval is receiving from the head region this is the pre caval this is the post caval receiving from the lower part okay and then this is hepatic this is abdominal okay this is a renal portal vein these are all the kind of veins which are present in the body of the frog and it is receiving the blood from the different regions of the body and bringing it back to the heart okay now this if you have any question or uh, you can ask the question sir Ji. please move to the previous slide which previous slide sir the second last this one yes sir Sir, what does that mean? Drains into another organ. Drains mean that you have collected an organ from another organ and dropped it into another organ. Mein drop kar diya. That is known as draining. So, sir, um, oxygen will not be reduced because it is the first organ. Oxygen will not be reduced. Where is the oxygen present in them? Where is the oxygen present in the uh, in the venous system? Beta? Only in pulmonary vein, oxygen is present. in the remaining bl blood there is no oxygen present okay venous system collect deoxygenated blood 
सर व्हाट इज हेपेटिक एंड एब्डोमिनल पोर्टल मींस हेपेटिक मींस लिवर एब्डोमिनल मींस प्रेजेंट इन योर एब्डोमेन सो वन इज कलेक्टेड डायरेक्टली टू द लिवर सेकंड इज प्रेजेंट इन द एब्डोमिनल रीजन इन द बेली रीजन सो इन द बेली रीजन इज द एब्डोमिनल एंड द लिवर रीजन इज द हेपेटिक दीज आर द डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ वेंस प्रेजेंट इन द बॉडी ओके नाउ कोई भी क्वेश्चन है तो आप कर लीजिएगा क्वेश्चन ताकि आपको आंसर कर सकूं मैं पोर्टल सिस्टम पोर्टल सिस्टम अगेन आई एम टेलिंग यू पीपल दैट पोर्टल सिस्टम इज अ सिस्टम इट्स बेसिकली क्वाइट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द अदर वेन्स ओके द अदर वेन इज कलेक्टिंग द ब्लड फ्रॉम वन रीजन एंड इट इज ब्रिंगिंग इट बैक डायरेक्टली टू द हार्ट बट व्हाट डज द पोर्टल सिस्टम डू द पोर्टल सिस्टम कलेक्ट ब्लड फ्रॉम वन ऑर्गन ड्रॉप्स दैट ब्लड इनटू अनदर ऑर्गन rather than carrying that blood directly to the heart so the blood is not carried directly to the heart from one organ let's suppose as i told you in the digestive system the blood is collected and from the digestive system that blood goes to the liver okay it's not going directly to the heart it goes to the liver and from the liver that blood will ultimately reach the heart so it is from one organ to another organ and then from the another organ it goes to the heart so indirectly the blood reaches the heart that is called portal system and then again there are two types of portal system one is hepatic the second is renal hepatic mean related to liver and renal mean related to kidney yes any other any other question इंटेस्टाइन इंटेस्टाइन कहां पर होते हैं डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम में नहीं होते ओके जे वहां इंटेस्टाइन आर प्रेजेंट इन द डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम ना यस भैया सर मैं मैं ये पूछ रही हूं कि जैसे आपने बोला एक लिवर का होता है और एक किडनी का होता है तो सर उसमें फिर डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम तो नहीं आ रहा अरे डाइजेस्टिव मैंने ये बोला कि कलेक्ट्स द ब्लड फ्रॉम वन रीजन एंड ब्रिंग एंड ड्रेन्स इनटू अनदर रीजन सो आई टोल्ड यू दैट देयर इज अ वेन प्रेजेंट इन द डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम दैट कलेक्ट द ब्लड फ्रॉम द होल डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम एंड देन दैट वेन ब्रिंग दैट ब्लड टू द लिवर दैट दैट वेन इज नोन एज हेपेटिक वेन हेपेटिक पोर्टल सिस्टम कहते हैं उसको बरीरा अभी तो मैंने दोबारा एक्सप्लेन किया है पोर्टल सिस्टम इज द पोर्टल सिस्टम इज अ काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम ऑफ वेंस दैट कलेक्ट्स ब्लड फ्रॉम वन रीजन एंड ड्रॉप दैट ब्लड इनटू अनदर रीजन ऑफ द बॉडी रादर देन कैरिंग इट डायरेक्टली टू द हार्ट सो इट सिंपल मींस दैट द ब्लड विल बी कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम वन ऑर्गन इट विल बी गोइंग टू द अनदर ऑर्गन बट इट विल नॉट डायरेक्टली गो टू द हार्ट क्लियर जो हां okay so till here we should uh, stop the recording now